Hello and welcome to no let's play me game move six of Como Rebbe. On the last let's play, we had our heart to heart with Isaac, which ended with a smooch from him finally, and also a nice little uh, light show with his drones, which ended with a heart hyena. Oh yeah, and it's the new year. But it also ended with this sentence, as if to ruin our perfect memory though, we hear a collective gasp of shock. That ain't good. Sorry I left you on that cliffhanger, but I also did that for me because after that episode I was like, ugh, I can't go on, need sleep, because I just, yeah, I didn't have any energy left. Was there anything else to say? Oh yeah, that brings our boy kissing count from, let's see, we kissed uh, uh, Taylor, we kissed, sorry, I'm having trouble remembering names, we kissed Isaac, we kissed uh, Chiron, we didn't kiss uh, Clace or Dante, ooh woo. It's weird that we're kissing these boys, but we still don't know their names. Anyways, let's uh, reset our face and continue. Everyone rushes to the TV in the backyard, and the chatter is overwhelming. But soon, the chatter tar starts to dissipate, and we hear people crying. Wait, what's going on? I don't know. Let's go look. We all make our way to the TV, taking slow, cautious strides. It's almost like we knew it was bad, and just wanted to delay the inevitable. So either the people in the city center are being forcibly evacuated, or they might be uh, being killed. Unless it's just, you know, one person died of starvation, but I don't think it would be that. Given what we know, I think we could all tell what was really going on. The people don't budge, so we slide away between them. Inch by inch, we make our way to the front of the sobbing crowd. On the TV, it appears to be helicopter footage of the town square. Oh, no. The camera makes a quick zoom to the center of the square. My heart sinks in my stomach as I see two bodies on the ground. They lay there, lifeless, as people watch in shock and horror. Not just zeros, but people from the city as well. Now they care? The camera zooms in more, and I stumble back aim to collect myself. Those were the parents of that child I kept seeing. I'd recognize them anywhere. Sure enough, the child breaks through the crowd and runs towards their parents. Carrying a bunch of food, they trip, causing the stuff to fly every, uh, every which way. Through teary eyes, they grab a couple of apples off the ground. Closing the distance between them and their parents, they kneel down. They bawl as they try to feed the apples to the bodies of their parents. But obviously, they don't respond. The child is carried away, kicking and screaming in confusion and sadness. A moment later, the flashing blue and yellow lights of the authorities arrive. Police cars show up, and even a couple of ambulances. This will go down in history as the first official interaction with the Zeros. Like many points in history, death changed everything in nearly an instant. The view of those two bodies on the ground will forever be etched into my mind. They were holding hands and now lay dead, surrounded by scraps of food. <coughs> I think on some level, we all knew that this was going to happen. The police start to close off access to the town square. They enroll two-toned blue and yellow security tape around the perimeter. Everyone stands back, while fellow Zeros embrace and console the child. The sobbing and shock of the partygoers around seems to fade. By now, they all pre proceeded to uh, process what they saw, and it became reality. Me and my friend stand there, now fully convinced of one simple fact. 
This is the fate of those who oppose Argus. It was made plain and simple for the whole world to see. But the group gives each other somber, almost knowing glances. We didn't want this, uh, things to go south like this. But now that they have, we could very well meet the same fate. Dead, on the streets, simply fighting for what we believed in. An inevitable thing when you place your trust in tyrants. Two hours after. The Midnight Deaths. Everyone left after the news broke. Sorry, my, let me just try to clear my throat a bit more. Still got COVID. Because, you know, this is the day after yesterday. Uh, well, everyone except our core group. Click. I lay on the ground, staring up at the stars. Clace, Chiron, and Taylor are fast asleep also on the ground. Isaac and Dante are still awake, sitting on the nearby couch. From where I'm laying, I can hear Isaac to my left and Dante to my right. I can't even begin to imagine what's going through their minds. In fact, I can barely even let a gasp on what's going on through mine. Staying focused on the stars, I just try my best to enjoy the moment. In order to do that, I repeat one simple fact to myself. There was nothing we can do about this right now. Our lives were on pause until sunrise. Might as well enjoy the view. Been drinking a lot lately, huh? What else is there to do? Fair enough. Let's uh, take it easy in the new year, though. Like I said, we're just living up Delta's arrival. Right. The high can't last forever. Feeling a pretty solid low right now. Not too low, I hope. <sighs> Jerry's still out. What do you think's gonna happen? I don't have a single clue. All I know is that we can't give up. Why not? It looks like we might have already lost. Knowing when to quit can be a virtue, right? Not to fight a battle you know you're gonna lose. It's weird that Isaac all of a sudden decided to switch. Like, I can understand the other people being cautious and then being like, you know what, let's try and fight the system. It's weird that Isaac's like, you know what, we should probably quit now. Not really. Surrender is worse than defeat. Because it comes with the loss of hope. Aren't you the one who wrote that? <laughs> Didn't know you read my work. Uh, I'm kinda your biggest fan. Oh, whoops, I got the, them switched. You've never really said so before. <laughs> I didn't think I had to. Why else would I let you live here so cheap? And why else would I do all the grocery shopping? I just know how important the process is. Didn't want to be a guy who got in the way. I... I appreciate all the help, Isaac. It's just really hard sometimes, you know? I believe it. The burden of expectation to surpass my previous work. The, the burden of not knowing if it'll all pay off. Yeah, that's why I would, w wouldn't want to be an artist. Sounds like you shouldn't give up hope either, then. It's just in style these days. Besides, I find that despair can be a lot stronger than hope. It's in our darkest hours that we find the strength to push forward. You putting that one in your next book? Way ahead of you. <laughs> Interesting message to send the people. Telling them that it's okay to give up. I'd say that's what makes us people. Hope is a pretty fickle thing, you know? So hard to find, yet so easy to lose. Why bet everything you've got on something so fragile? Well, it's better than the alternative. What's the alternative? I don't know. And that's the scary part. I'm not even capable of considering failure an option. I think that's what I'd call hope. 
I'd just call that stubborn. <laughs> well, you, you can't change the world if you aren't a little stubborn. Hmm. They both laugh, but then a serious atmosphere returns. I slowly but surely drift into slumber as they continue talking. Do you think I'm a good person, Dante? Of course. I, I keep telling myself that. I'm just hoping I believe it one day. It do be like that. Hey, I believe it. Thanks. I'm just scared. I really thought Argus would do something. They kind of did, though, didn't they? Inaction can say far more than we give it credit for. Besides, you saw everyone gathering in the town square. It looks like those deaths are really waking people up. I guess they were all just living life like me. Assuming Argus would do what's best. Mm, the corporation doing what's best. I'm pretty sure they just signed their own death warrant. People are feeding the Zeros now, in, in droves, too. All we have to do is hold out until Hermes Day. We're still going to that convention, right? Yeah, I uh, have a room for us, too. Something tells me our homes aren't safe anymore. Staying in public at a con is a pretty good idea. Blending into a crowd is really our only option right now. Same deal as the plane, then? If any of you need private time, we can wait outside the room. Mm, works for me. <sighs> I'm pretty sure we can do this. If Cypher wins, then there'll be tons of zeros in the system. We won't be the only targets anymore. Not by a long shot. Yeah. There'd probably be too many targets to take care of. I think that's what Cypher is trying to do. A lot harder to fend off a storm than a single raindrop. Good metaphor, man. I would have gone for a bursting dam, personally. <laughs> really? Yeah. A lot more dramatic. I'll take your word for it. A small silence. You know, I think you're the smartest guy I've ever met. Really? Yeah. I feel, uh... A lot more relaxed now. You're probably the only person who could have done that. Oh, well, they say I have a way with words. It's like he's some sort of writer. It's not just that. It's your conviction, too. You work so hard despite the burdens around you. Well, yeah. Been doing it since I was a kid. What do you mean? Well... It wasn't exactly my choice to live in that library. I would have preferred having a normal family life. Did he not ever tell him? Me too, man. Guess it's not just Delta, then. All of us have had to start our lives anew. Sometimes that's the only option. Well, hmm? have you uh, ever thought about giving up? A lot of people seem to be talking about that. You mean... Yeah. Once or twice? That library got pretty lonely. What about you? Yeah. I'm not proud of it, though. No need to be ashamed, Isaac. It do be like that sometimes. Besides, pride is too powerful to waste on yourself. It's meant to be shared and enrich the lives of others. And I'm not meaning that as a joke. It's something I've thought about as well. Kind of like how you're proud of me? <laughs> <laughs> like you said, you do let me live here for next to nothing, and you take on a lot of tasks so I can focus on work. You wouldn't do that if you didn't think I was special. You must take pride in the things I'm making. Of course. I feel like you could change the world with your words. <laughs> nothing for a few more moments. Don't worry, Isaac. I'm proud of you, too. Those words seem to strike a chord with Isaac, as he speaks on the verge of tears. Thanks, Dante. You all good? Yeah, yeah. Just feels nice to hear someone say it. That was the end of their conversation, as only silence remains. 
I've never heard the two of them talk on their own like that before. A real, true bond. They really were the best of friends. I lay still, staring at the stars. It's hard to fall asleep, as fear still courses through me. Zero's dying, an agent on her tail, and Hermes demands. There was a lot to happen all at once. Yet, all of it was intricately tied to our fate. Moments like this make me hate that I've never had a vision. Having something to cling on to would be so helpful. But right now, even the concept of tomorrow eludes me. There's too much in the air to even think about what could happen next. Because... What we learned tonight was that everything can change in an instant. I close my eyes, but I can't get that picture out of my head. The bodies in the town square. That child, now an orphan. None of them did anything to deserve this. It's awful. I close my eyes even tighter, trying to forget about what I saw. But... There's one thing I can't get my mind off of. That blue and yellow security tape, marking it like a crime scene. Yeah, just like a crime scene. But that's not too far from the truth. It really did feel like a crime that was committed tonight. And this crime rested solely on the shoulders of Argus. When lives are lost, resolve is found. Huh, new place. As soon as we all wake up, Isaac leads us to the convention center. Things didn't officially start until tomorrow, but people always assembled early. It's actually a skin con instead of a fur con. Sorry, I had to, uh, yeet. An extra day or two to mingle with friends was always an appealing prospect. Wow, they really made the place pretty, huh? Yeah, way better than last year. Too bad we didn't have time to make costumes. There's always next year. The atmosphere around me is one of denial. Not just my friends but all the congoers as well. It's like everybody prioritizes fun instead of reality. The events that took place in the town square changed things forever. Not just the fight between Argus and Cypher, but for the entire world. Anti-Argus protests were happening in almost every major city. And in Toronto, where it all began, people were giving food as uh, zeros food and support. As avoidable as tragedy was, it seemed to open up everyone's eyes. I start to think about what Chiron told me. The first person doesn't matter if an avalanche follows. Normally, that'd be the case, but in this situation, it was the complete opposite. In this case, the first person or people, people mattered more than anything. The zeros that died would be etched into the annuals of history. I'm still worried about what'll happen to me and my friends, though. I mean... Like, I, I know that this is a story, like, I did get a little bit spoiled, where it's like, Hey, something could happen to us? But, um... I mean, <clears throat> we gave an apple, which is happening, you know, a lot more frequently now. We snuck uh, Chiron in the back entrance, which I, I mean, that's a bit of more of a crime, but still not by much. The biggest thing would be, um, you know, developing phones, except for the whole briefcase thing. That might be a bit of a problem, but who knows? 
But yeah, right now, I think Argus has a lot more on its place than us, or I'd have to see him. Unless they planned for that. Anyways, especially with the agent appearing at the party out of nowhere, too. Did they really, really have the technology to sneak into the house like that? Sorry, I have to blow my nose. COVID sucks. No, that would be impossible, wouldn't it? Uh, unless. I remember Isaac showing us that hack on the back door. Is it possible they snuck into the party through the back? There's no way Isaac would willingly let them into the house. But then why were they holding Clay's diary? It's almost as if they were just they were just there to mock me. Not to take action or harm me, just to tease me. Which again is kind of an interesting thing where they are teasing. Even when they disappeared, I still felt them around. It's like I'm being watched all the time, no matter what. I think about what I wrote in my diary just a little while ago. Are you in this right now? It's stupid, but at the same time, it makes sense. If they only taunted me with an apple, I believe they just saw the camera footage. But to have Clay's diary and know about what I did, that's different. There weren't any cameras in our bedrooms, I know that much. And they couldn't have been looking in from the window. Isaac's security encompasses the entire perimeter. We were dealing with something else here. Something that, if true, was a testament to Argus's skill. To be able to watch and monitor me without any sort of detection? Hmm. Well, Delta? Sound good to you? Wasn't paying attention. Also, I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure if it's the game or my keyboard. I switched the batteries. I must have totally zoned out. Uh, what was it? Sorry, I was lost in my head. Oh, no worries. We're just talking about that bet in the group chat. You know, whether Clace would get recognized or not. Not exactly recognized. More like found out. I'm still going to claim that I'm cosplaying as Clace. So if they buy it, then my cover remains intact. Come on, we got this one in the bag. Do we really, though? That how not? I mean, look at how much money you're willing to bet. It can't be that much money. The snack bill from our New Year's Eve party. It's got to be at least $500. Uh, <clears throat> close to a thousand, actually. Like, how... Hold on a sec. How much would that be, actually? Like, I don't know how much that would be in, like, chips, maybe, like, 500 bags of chips or something like that. I mean, I guess he might put some cheese samplers in, unless he's including alcohol, you know? Close to a thousand, Taylor! Clace just chuckles as he listens in. Yeah, we're gonna win no matter what. Might as well get the loser to cover the party fees, right? You sound way too certain. Only disaster can follow. I don't know, Dante. I'm pretty sure Clay's can stay under the radar. There was a huge crowd outside and nobody recognized him. But you want to bet a thousand dollars on that? I've won bets that seemed much worse. Remember, Isaac, I barely have any money. You better be certain about this. I have to think about the group chat for a moment. I mean, could he just, you know, abstain from money stuff? Bets? The w wager is clearly taking up more space in their head than mine. It's pretty simple, if I recall correctly. Clace thinks he's going to be found out, so if he does, then he wins. If he doesn't, then we win, meaning he'd have to pay the snack bill. Well, Delta? I start to think about the situation, especially since I saw Clace's diary and the card inside of it. 
Ever since he arrived, his privacy has been his main concern. He, st he stands to gain a lot by remaining undercover. So even if we think otherwise, this will likely play out in our favor. I start to wonder if that's part of his plan. If he offered to treat us, Isaac would pro probably say no. But if he lost the bet, fair and square, then he'd have to. Is he really trying to help us out under the guidance of a contest or guide of a contest? Taylor's right. We've got this in the bag. Knew I could count on you, Delta. <laughs> Always the voice of reason. I'm not too worried either. I'm just trusting Isaac here. He has yet to let me down. Then you won't mind if I take Clay's side? Betrayal? It will. Betrayal. <laughs> it's your funeral. You'd lose less if you stayed on our side. Then it's only $200 each. Yeah, but the hit to my pride would be worse. I gotta go with my gut on this one. Alright then. Losing party splits the bill. It's a bet. Easiest grand I've ever saved. Don't get too cocky, Isaac. It's not cocky if I know I'm gonna win. He smirks and starts walking away. We all start following, assuming he's leading us up to our hotel room. In the meantime, let's get things started. Same rules as the plane, okay? If you need private time in the room, then we'll wait in the hallway. Just promise not to split up or go back to either of our houses. Now when you mean private time, you mean a woo time or are you meaning just chill time? So what, I'm just supposed to avoid my own home? For your safety? Yeah. Just until Hermes Day, right? Right. And what if things go wrong? You're placing a lot of faith in Cypher here. Well, I believe in them. Just like you believed in Argus. Look at how that one paid off. They did nothing. Taylor. Dante, it's okay. I can understand why he's worried. Let's get to the hotel room and I'll explain a little more. <laughs> a little more? Like what? You'll have to wait and see. Guess we can keep going. And nice. Unfortunately for me, like, I got a hotel room for MFF, but... I'm not sure if I got it later than usual, but the place that I had that was, like, connected to MFF was closed. Uh, not closed. It was booked up. Heck. Again, I get my hotel from the first time I went to MFF, which is, I prefer to say is nicer, except it doesn't have food there. But, um, it's a walk away, and I'm gonna be dancing my tail off until my paws are blue. So... That's going to be a bit of a pain. Anyways, Isaac leads us all to the hotel room, and the view astounds me. You can see almost all of Toronto, and it's truly breathtaking. This is my first time seeing it like this. Too bad the circumstances weren't a little better. We all scatter about the room, checking out the amenities. Only one bed? Couldn't you get a bigger room? We can all be a cuddle puddle. Why? You don't want to share <laughs> with five other people. Hey, think of the possibilities. Something tells me it wouldn't be the first time. Ugh, that's not fair. So what exactly did you want to explain, Isaac? I have some insider info. There's a lot of talk within Argus right now. I'm not surprised given what's happened. They kind of dropped the ball on this one, big time. A lot of people are quitting in order to help the Zeros. Apparently, they're starting to breach other cities as well. Isn't breach a harsh term? Well, it's just what Argus said in their communication. So they still see us as a threat then? It's all professional lingo. I wouldn't take it to heart. There's something way more important. And that is? The leader of Argus is coming out to play. Hmm. Seriously? Seriously. 
in the town square on Hermes Day. I guess they want to be present for the revolution. And Hermes can still pull this off, right in front of the enemy? Yeah, that's a fair point. Security will be over the top. Oh, it definitely will be. In the town square, at least. But I don't think that's where Cypher is planning to act. You mean it's just a distraction? I can't say. How long have you known this exactly? Just a few days. Everyone in Argus was notified. That must have been what my counselor was so shocked about. I definitely received an important phone call that day. So, I guess everything is lined up then. Survive for just a few more days and it's all over. If you stick by my side, it'll be easy. You keep saying that, but it certainly doesn't help my paranoia. Isaac rubs the back of his head, purely nervous. Well, this is where I have to come clean. There's, uh, something I've been hiding from all of you. And that's where we're gonna end this Let's Play. So comment, cuz I like comments. Nah, I'm not gonna do that twice in a row. Really? Yeah, and I'm not really proud of it. But we're at the finish line, so I have to come clean. You've been helping Hermes? I... He is Cypher. Or... I work for Cypher. It do be like that. We know. <laughs> Wait, what? I figured it was obvious from the start. I just thought it was one of those things we weren't talking about. Who else would have helped me like you did? S seriously? I even you, Delta? I'd be lying if I said I was surprised. He scoffs. I, I had a big reveal planned and everything. You're really gonna take this away from me? Yeah. Well, we're not taking it away from you. You suck at keeping secrets, so it's your fault. You also don't lock your uh, office place. How did you know? Well, nobody in the world knows who Hermes is, but you keep talking about them like you know them. Using words like his and stuff like that, you definitely know more than you've let on. Oh, I didn't catch that. And there's all those nights you worked late and those sales you kept quote-unquote losing to illegal modders. Hmm. All right, all right. I believe you. Please stop rubbing in my mistakes. It's kind of fun to hear, though. I can delete your identity. And I'm shutting up. <laughs> he laughs, and the atmosphere in the room immediately relaxes. So, now you know why I've kept saying it. You're safe by my side, because my safety is essential. Essential how? It's not just coincidence that my interview is on the 5th. When everyone's eyes will be on the town square. You mean the distraction? How do you get to choose one? I mean, I guess they could give you a number of dates, but yeah. I can't say any more than that. Just trust me. Please. Stick by my side and you'll be safe. If you stray away right now, things could go south. But that's also why I can't tell you all the details. You're free to walk away as long as you know nothing more. I can't risk having them interrogate you. Mmm, and that's why we're in the Matrix. You make it sound so horrifying. Tante, Cypher is not going to fail. Just stick with me for a few more days. And sneak into their HQ with you. It's not really sneaking. I'm invited. Yeah, but we aren't. Don't worry, I have it covered. Dunny scoffs. Uh, is this part of the promise? The culmination of it, yeah. All right then. Nope, sorry. I trust you. Sorry. The secrecy isn't helping your case, Isaac. Have you been in danger yet? Yes. Well, there's an agent after us. <laughs> That's the thing, though. There isn't. Am I just being mental or meant? You know what I mean. What do you mean? 
Sorry, Delta. I looked through footage of the Wayfair. I saw you pick up Dante's wallet, but nothing else happened. Hmm. That's impossible. Though they could have scrubbed it. Who knows? They must have altered the footage somehow. But I think this is a tough time for all of us. My mind has definitely played a few tricks on me, too. So, it's not like you did anything wrong. All right? I nod, but I still don't believe it. So nothing bad has come of our actions? At all? It would sure seem that way. Taylor stares at me, and I shrug. <sighs> I'll go along with this, for now. I don't plan on going anywhere. Kinda reckon I'm here to the end. See? Then there's nothing to worry about. Look at you, Dante, seeing things were horrifying. Trust me, one day, you'll wish you could come back and relive this. I still feel like that, that, even though that's an emphasis, I still feel that's one of those things where it's like, and that's why you're in the stolja machine. Uh, sorry, still sick. Come back and relive this? Oh yeah, the few weeks where I'm terrified for my safety. The nostalgia is really laid on thick here. Maybe everything worked out well and we're just at the end of our life and it's like, I want to go back in time and relive the good times. Back when they didn't have hyper porn. Nostalgia. Can we just have fun for the next few days then? I've got a panel to run and I've got a lot to prepare. Yeah, as long as we stick close to one another. That means we'll be at your panel, so don't disappoint us. <laughs> Always with the pressure. I guess Isaac expected his true nature to be a revelation. But he can't really keep anything from your besties, can you? Sometimes they know you even better than you know yourself. I definitely had a lingering suspicion, but it's nice to see it confirmed. A major piece of the puzzle was just locked into place. And, like a puzzle, seeing more of the picture made everything easier. I'm baffled about the footage Isaac mentioned, though. I was locked in fright, staring right at an agent at the Wayfarer. If that was missing, then the footage must have been doctored. So, no matter what he says, I still can't guarantee our safety. In fact, now we know he worked for Cypher, our danger makes sense. You weren't an outsider we weren't an outside case like we thought. Isaac worked for the enemy. Is it okay if I have some alone <clears throat> time with Delta? I just want to talk to them for a few minutes. I don't mind. Everyone nods and looks at one another. Sure picked a good time to move, hey eh, Delta? He smirks. As they all start to leave the room, Isaac wanted to talk to me alone. I start to feel a little bit worried. Ugh, just don't take all day, all right? I need to prepare for that panel. You got it, boss. One by one, they exit the room, leaving us alone. I look at Isaac and gulp. What was going on? Don't worry, Delta. It's nothing bad. You're just the one I trust the most. I am a bit relieved at this reassurance. But I still feel bad for tricking everyone else. Tricking? Look, I've been playing a careful game for a while now. What to say, when to say it, fun stuff like that. It was clear that I had to stop holding everything back. He smirks at me. Still got a few cards close to my chest, though. What else could there be? Working for Cypher wasn't enough? I'm pretty sure I talked to you about this at the party. You know, how you might learn some more stuff. I nod. I guess that time has come. As much as I wish it hadn't. Everything in the town square really changed up my plans. What are those plans exactly? Actually, I can't talk about that right now. You'll have to stay on the same page as everybody else. But did you want to tell me then? I'm trying to figure out how to word it. Right now, everything I say is extra important. I wish there was a way to tell you without telling you. Oh, fine now, eventually. 
I guess it's my time for some questions then. Did you really look at the footage of the Wayfarer? Yeah. And I saw what I saw. I'm sorry, Delta. I don't know what to tell you. I shrug. Are you sure the footage couldn't have been edited? Quite positive. Even Argus has to stay within the lines. It's their tech, but we still have our rights. Mm -hmm. Really? I can't imagine they'd edit a minute of footage from some random tavern. The owner doesn't deserve to have their own security tampered with. I mean, they don't deserve it, but that wouldn't stop it. <laughs> Look at Facebook. They constantly steal people's data and it's like, we're sorry that we stole your data again. It won't happen again. And then they do it again. I guess that makes sense. I bumped into someone there right after I saw the agent. Hmm. And then we also bumped into Dante at the party. Did, is that important? Didn't see that. Again, I'm not sure what to say. I just saw you pick up the wallet and leave. Hmm. This doesn't really make sense. Tell me about it. I saw them at the party, too. Okay, now that's impossible. I would never let somebody like that into my house. What if they snuck in? How? Didn't you take the security off the back door? Yeah? They could have snuck in that way, then. It, it still doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Why crash our party? Well, you work for Cypher. I... Yes? Do I need to get a new keyboard to put in new batteries? Uh, but their eyes should have been elsewhere. From what I can tell, my misdirection worked fine. With all these questions, I feel like somebody's gonna burst in at any moment. Misdirection? That report on the TV at work? I was certain they fell for it. What are you talking about? It was spoofed, so it appeared like it was live. So does that mean he is the leader of Cypher? He's, uh, Hermes? I even used a voice changer and slipped up on purpose. Like, a few hints about where it was being broadcast from. It was a trick, so Argus thought they knew where our HQ was. Then, I could take everybody to the safety of my own home. After the party, we plan to stay safe in the con crowd. Delta, I'm sorry, but what you're saying, it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. So, everyone at the party was Cypher? I mean, I was thinking so. Yeah. Well, except for you and the main group. I needed a safe place to hide while Argus took the bait. But that's the weird part. They did it. And you say there was an agent in my house? It wouldn't be just one agent, it'd be a swarm, a, a takedown. He stops to think, clearly annoyed, a little annoyed at the situation. <clears throat> I'm just baffled at what he's telling me. He's Hermes. Wait, he's Hermes? That was him on the TV? He gave Argus the ultimatum that led to the Midnight Deaths? The more I think about it, the more everything starts to make sense. Isaac seemed to know everyone at the party, but never mentioned them before. They only mingled with Isaac, and he was handing off a briefcase to them. He didn't just stumble upon Cypher's blueprint then. He made it, and that means Chiron has been the test run all along. We're even more involved than I thought that we were. It's all been Isaac. He places his hands on his shoulders and looks me right in the eyes. You know what I'm trying to tell you, right? I can trust that this isn't going over your head? Hmm. I nod. He need, his need for discretion is understandable. A vocal admiration that he's Hermes would, could go very wrong very fast. 
especially if Vargas was listening in, like he feared they might be. Because of course they wouldn't put two and two together either. Good. Remember that pact we made. He moves his hands from my shoulders and smiles. Until the end, right? Yeah, until the end. Perfect. Luffy, well, I'm not a spy robot. Remember, you're safe by my side. And there's only a few more days to go. You've made it this far, Delta. It's time to bring things to an end. I guess I don't really have to say, I have a say in the matter. If I left, he wouldn't guarantee my safety. And just like he says, I have been safe by his side. My trust and faith in him continues to be rewarded. This is a lot to take in, both his, son, his hidden identity and the Argus agent. It feels like there, there's something missing here, one vital piece of the puzzle. Maybe just tell myself uh, that to myself to make the coping easier. Either way, I request some private time. I need a few minutes to think. Sure thing, Delta. I'll just chill with the others in the hallway. I should probably see how they're doing anyway. He smiles and leaves the room almost immediately. I can hear the chatter commence, but I can't make out any words. It's for the best, though. This was time for me to focus on my own thoughts. Isaac gives me more time to think about... Uh... More... Gives me more to think about than he's ever given me before. Is this gonna be the word thing that was at the beginning? Gonna give him some credit for acting in front of the group, though. Coming, coming clean as a cipher agent. But withholding the fact that he's Hermes... I start to wonder why I'm the one he's trusted with a secret. Is it just because we're dating? Perhaps his feelings were stronger than I thought. Either way, I might be the one and only person alive who knows a secret. Is that why I'm being watched? Because I'm the person of notes to Hermes? Can't be. He only told me a moment moments ago. And they've been watching for a while it also mean they knew who hermes was if they did they'd probably arrest him the agent holding an apple is the only part about all of this that makes sense i understand why they'd have that knowledge but only that knowledge there's no way for them to know about how i read Cleese's diary and not only that, but why would it even matter to them? Is it possible that there's more to this story than I know? His story. No, it couldn't be that. It's almost like the agent possesses foresight. They knew the exact moment that I'd be at the Wayfarer. And the exact second I'd cross paths with them at the party. They <clears throat> seem to appear and disappear without a trace, too. It couldn't be a fragment, figment of my imagination. It had to be something more. This felt, this feeling that I felt, it's almost impossible to put into words. I know what it's like to be watched. I subject myself to Argus's surveillance whenever I leave the house. We're all used to our privacy being slightly invaded in the name of peace. But this is different. It's deeper. Like my very core is being violated. Like someone is aware of my thoughts in every aspect of my life. There's been a few moments where I felt like I've lost control as well. Like I'm just watching a movie or going through the motions. Almost like a dream. Fragmented memories of semi-related events. That reminds me of what my counselor told me. Dreams. Memories. Then, there's a nostalgic technology that he mentioned. I definitely saw something about it on the TV during the anniversary report. The ability to revisit past memories. Could that be the key to this? As a society, we've always been obsessed with recording memories. 
first in diaries and notes, then pictures, and eventually videos. This new technology, at least in theory, is a natural progression of that. Could it be using that? Could I be using that to, re to revisit my past right now? No, that couldn't be it. I'm well aware that this is my reality and my present. But if we could revisit memories in the future, could we enter someone else's? That be that may sound outrageous, but it also makes perfect sense. At least it's a thought that I deem too useful to throw away. The technology may not even exist yet, but I could still make use of it. Every sight and sound around me could become invaluable evidence. The words of my friends and allies, too, could become essential testimony. Like I wrote in my diary, are you reading this right now? I suppose, now, it would be more like, can you hear my thoughts? And furthermore, I wish I knew why you were doing this to me. Thoughts of old science fiction stories cross my mind. People's lives could be bought and sold as entertainment experience. Each and every second, every choice, determining the value of that experience. If that's the case, and my life is simply being used as entertainment? Well, I can only hope that the asking price was worth it. Because, right now, it's... Sorry, I'm breaking the fourth wall, even though the game is breaking the fourth wall. The asking price is twenty dollars. Being lovers to the man who changed the world? That strikes me as pretty noticeable life. Notable. Of course, there are a bunch of other, more scary options. Maybe I'm caught, and Argus is using my memories to find the others. That thought then shivers down my spine. I'd rather not consider it. Either way, I know I'm being watched. I need to live my life accordingly. Whether I'm being watched now or in the future, it doesn't matter. I continue to put myself in the situations that show the true colors of this group. My life could end up being a time capsule that absolves all of us or condemns us. One thing is clear. This is a crucial period for all of us. I can't just relax and enjoy the fun of enjoy a little a fun little convention with my friends. Every second that passes is a second I could use in our favor. Cause whoever's watching us right now, whoever or uh, wherever or whenever you are, I want you to know that we're good people. Just a group of friends willing to fight for what we believe in. And when the sun sets, no matter what happens, I want everybody to know that. We can't go down in history as a group of villains that opposed Argus. Their pursuit of this new technology could eventually end up destroying them. Sorry, my nose is all hecky. There's not a single secret that could be kept when... So our minds are opened up, and that goes for them, just as, as well as me. I lay back on the bed and stare straight up. What an abstract way of thinking. Does Argus actually know what they're creating? Are they using therapy as an excuse to invade our lives even more? It's actually kind of ironic. I'm remembering... I remember zoning out during their report, in an attempt to ignore it. I thought, if there's one thing nobody can monitor, it's what I'm thinking. Pre pretty convenient for you that I choose that moment to gather my thoughts. Instead of grounding myself in this new life, I'm actually, I was actually grounding you, whoever you are. If you work for Argus, this might not go the way you think. So, I only have one thing to say. I hope you're ready to see this through to the end. <laughs> I was like, well, I was thinking I was the main character, but it's like, I guess I could also be the Argus agent.
I didn't think it'd be like, hey, I'm the bad guy. And heck, now I'm going to have to uh, go through all that again just to get to this point. But hey, we can kiss all the boys again. Ooh. Uh, Welcome to the final fragment map. This marks the beginning of the end. Oh. Enjoy the conclusion of your experience. And thank you for choosing Argus. Sad. I hope to finish this before I have to go out on my next expedition because that would be an entire month plus where I couldn't play this game. So make use of it. Balls! Well, anyways, that's gonna be the end of this let's play. Whew. And an hour long. So, please comment, cuz, like, comment, tell me you like, dislike, tips, as always. If you like my YouTube and would like to see it grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out the next episode. And please remember to spay new year and myself control the pet population. Man, I am all sweaty and hot, and also, like, my nose is a, it's not really stuffy, but it's like, there's a thing where you just need to, you know, move air around or something to get it to work. Just hecking. How is you going to get naked? And until next time, me, Game of Six have come away. So thanks and see you.